Hello. Five tips to be successful in your planning tanks. So first tip is your lighting really does matter. Your type of light you want will depend on what you stock in your tank setup, but for the most part, the lights that are advertised out there for planning tanks are all pretty good. Definitely use a timer or potentially get a light that lets you adjust the settings and the time and length that the lights are on for. Full spectrum is preferable. So if it only has white light, blue light, it may work for low light plants. But ultimately, if you want to have medium to higher light plants, you'll want to go full spectrum. Tip number two, plant properly and do your maintenance. So research the required care of each plant. Do not bury your rhizome plants. And I'm talking about your Anubis, anything that has a rhizome stem, do not bury it. That was the first rookie mistake I ever made. Do not over trim your stem plants. You gotta leave a few leaves, so don't trim it all the way down. Some aquatist, horticulturist YouTube channels will tell you that you can do this as long as you have established roots. I have found you're taking a gamble there when you do that. It could work. It's better to be safe than sorry. And do not move your crypts. Once you plant them in your tank, you will experience potentially some crypt melt. If you're gonna move them, make sure you do not remove them fully from the water because they adapt to your water parameters and they really don't like being moved. Tip number three, keep your water parameters consistent, as consistent as possible. And like I said, don't move your plants around too much. Plants adapt to your water. When you do water changes, if you do more than 50%, you can actually harm your fish. You can cause them to get bloat, um, basically swim bladder issues. So that's one reason to not do too much water change or too much at once. But another reason is because if you alter the water parameters too much, you may shock your plants. So be careful when doing that. Tip number four, when you do your research, check multiple so sources. Don't just go off one source. So an example that I can give is I bought bog moss. Um, the official name is, forgive me if I butcher this, it's Mayaka Hutalysis. Who delicious? Who? Anyway, it's a hardy plant that doesn't require CO2, supposedly. Moderate light, like it likes lots of nutrients. Easy plant with medium to fast growth. Reading all this from my research, I thought, wow, okay, this is a perfect fit for my aquarium. I'm going to get it. After melting on me, I did some more research. Turns out it prefers softer water. And the only way I found this source was by checking multiple websites, reading every last little bit, and then somewhere tucked away in there, one website did mention that it doesn't like super hard water. So I had planted it entirely in the wrong tank. Oops. So that's unfortunate. I do not have that plant anymore. Definitely do your research and don't take one source for its word. Get multiple opinions and go from there. Tip number five, learn how to balance your tank. So you get algae and you end up having higher maintenance if you don't balance your tank. 
in this tank back here, you can see I have almost no algae. There's a little bit growing at the top there, which I will brush away. And if it comes back, it comes back. But on my plants, it is very, very clean. And that's great because they need to be clear of algae in order to photosynthesize with the light. And the, how I did this was just by balancing out my tank, meaning there's just enough light to keep everything happy, but not too much light for algae, but not too little light that the plants don't thrive. There's just enough nutrients so that there's no nutrient deficiencies, but not too much nutrients for algae to take hold. It can be very difficult to do this, but it's absolutely worth it if you can figure out how to balance your tank. And I will definitely do a video on this at some point. So if you would like more info, please do subscribe. I plan to do a video on dirty taints and I plan to do a video on how to balance your taint because that was a question that I asked multiple different sources, YouTubers, you name it, and they could not give me a clear answer. So I had to figure it out on my own. And also had to take bits and pieces of what they say to figure that out. So definitely don't go off one source, like I said. Speaking of sources, pro tip, if you do happen to find that guy or gal, aquatic dork that knows what they're talking about, absolutely ask lots of questions, bug the crap out of them, absorb everything you can. This goofy looking guy right here, his name is Dustin, and he runs a YouTube channel called Your Tap Water is Crap. Do check him out. I owe a lot of my plant success to him. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section, and have an awesome day.